afternoon. I'm Keith Miller, president of Greenville Technical College, and I want to welcome you to our annual donor appreciation event. And as you know, it's going to be virtual this year, but you know what? That's, that certainly is a sign of everything that we have been able to accomplish thanks to the support of the community and especially donors such as yours. The community really came together to help us to continue to provide services to students. I mean, when you look at some of the things that happen, as an example, we had an anonymous donor pay for, I believe it was 35 nursing students to be able to take their state boards. Um, the Truest um, Foundation helped us um, open up the center that I'm standing in now, the Truist Culinary and Hospitality Innovation Center. And the list just goes on and on. The college froze tuition. We bought personal protective equipment for students and, and scholarships that many of you, endowments and everything that many of you established really made things happen. I know you've heard me say before that we are a community-based college and without the support of that community, meaning yourself, we would not be able to serve thousands and thousands of students every year. So thank you very much for that. We certainly appreciate that. And shortly, you're going to hear from some of those students. You'll hear directly from them about the impact that your support has had. You know, and, but on a first on a note, of, a sad note, but yet a note of gratitude, You've, you probably know that Tom Barton, Dr. Barton, has passed away this year. And, and as you know, Tom started Greenville Technical College and, and just had a huge, huge impact on this community and the state as a whole. And on another note, just very recently, Dr. Walt Brazier, has passed away. Once again, used to be a member of the foundation, um, was on the Greenville Technical College Area Commission, the college board, and had a huge impact, not just from his generosity, but from his guidance and his wisdom. So these are all great examples of what it takes to pull a community together and make things happen. I, I think you know of the economic impact that Greenville Technical College has on not just Greenville County, but the upstate and the state as a whole. And that impacts the quality of life for each and every one of us. So we all benefit for that. Whether we've taken classes or not, everybody does benefit from that positive economic impact. So thank you once again. I look forward to hopefully next year when we do this, we can do this in person. Um, but thank you for helping us get through this year and each and every other year. I look Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Well, Dr. Miller's comments really do ring true, don't they? Especially for me personally. I grew up in Greenville. It's just been my joy my whole life to see Greenville Technical College make dreams come true for people in all walks of life and all stages that want to enhance their education or find something new to do. And really now in 2021, never more than ever before. And I'm really excited today. Oh, by the way, I'm Jane Robolo with WYFF4. I'm very excited today to be able to step into this program and introduce you to three really special Greenville Tech students. These are people who have big dreams. And thanks to your donations and your support of the foundation, they're able to make those dreams come true. My name is Shade Beck, and I'm currently a student at Greenville Tech. I am majoring in human services and arts. My career path is bereavement counseling for veterans. I am a Army veteran. I'm a single mom of three, and I'm currently in my second year. The way that I found out about the organization was I had a professor, Ms. Tracy Raines, and um, throughout the time of um, the pandemic, I had been messaging her back and forth about employment because um, I lost my income due to the pandemic, and so, when I was talking to her, she asked me, was I going to continue with my education? And I remember explaining to her that, you know, because of the pandemic, I had to drop my class. I couldn't pay for it. So I needed to work out with the, the um, school my payment arrangement. And she told me, well, I think I have a foundation that could help you. Let me work on this if it's OK with you, and then I'll get back to you. And so, I, you know, absolutely, I told her that it was OK. And the next day, she emailed me and she said, I even I myself am surprised because we were able to get the foundation to help you. One of the things um, that's very obvious to me was the need for income. 
I lost a substantial amount of income when the pandemic hit and there was no way for me to pay that balance. So um, with Ms. Tracy connecting me to this foundation, I'm now able to complete this one class that I need in order to get my degrees. So that way I can go and move on and to do great things. So without her connecting me to them, I would be trying to scrape pennies and save cans in order for me to pay off the balance because you know, I, didn't, I didn't have it. I, did, I, I still don't have it. I'm still trying to recover. So the foundation paying that off for me, that just allowed me to continue with my education so that way I can better myself for my kids and just to be a, a civil functioning person in society. That's, that's what the foundation has offered me. I'm planning to use Greenville Tech as a bridge in order to connect me from one aspect of my life into the other. So what I'll do is once I get done here at Greenville Tech, I'm going to transfer over to Limestone in order to complete my bachelor's degree in social work. And then once I get done with my bachelor's degree in social work, I'm going to transfer to USC in Columbia so that way I can complete my master's for bereavement counseling. So Greenville Tech, is really giving me the basis and the blocks that I need in order to build where I need to be and where I want to go. So definitely I plan on moving forward from Greenville Tech and doing great things. And matter of fact, the two instructors in the HUS program are really who kind of helped me figure out like what I wanted to do. And Ms. Tracy Raines is definitely one of them. And another one, um, her name is Ms. Lynn Kusick. Ms. Lynn Kusick was the one who let me know, you know, you're pretty good at bereavement. You know, some people, they shy away from death. But when she saw the twinkle in my eye, she was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. You, you, you should definitely look into bereavement counseling, so. Those two ladies, when I met them, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know what I really want to do. I'm not sure. And by the time I got done with those classes with them, I knew exactly where I wanted to go and exactly where I wanted to be and exactly who I wanted to be when I got there. So a part of our HUS program is you have to do an internship or field placement um, at a place of your choice, you know, population, just to see if it's what you would like to do. And one of the places that um, I went to was Upstate Warrior Solution. And I went to them because veterans, I have a passion for veterans. I myself am a veteran. So um, I talked to Ms. Tracy and she was asking me, you know, what exactly organization would you like to work for? And I remember saying bereavement was definitely at the top of my list, but veterans is as well. So she linked me with Upstate Warrior Solution and um, I done my internship there, my field placement. And once I was there, um, they kept telling me about another um, program that they had called the Fellowship Program. And it was geared towards helping veterans transition from the military into civilian life. And so because of my field placement there, they saw me as an asset and they asked me to apply for the Fellowship Program. And so I did, and that's where I currently work at now. Greenville Tech is it's, it's helped me and I definitely, I want to ensure that those who come after me, they know that Greenville Tech can be used as a positive resource to better themselves and get to where they want to be in life, definitely. I believe that because Greenville Tech is such an affordable school, the donors, their finances, they're able to go further and spread a lot more further out towards more students because Greenville Tech isn't as expensive as other institutions or universities. To the donors who donated to the foundation, from a Greenville Tech student, I want to sincerely say thank you. Because of your generosity, I'm able to continue my education and make a better life for myself and my kids. And I couldn't ask for anything more than that. So from me to you, thank you. My name is Lacey Policcio. I am a current student um, in my second year at Greenville Tech in the Culinary Arts Program. I have two children and a husband, three cats, eight chickens, and a dog. <laughs> my mom lives with us as well. Um, I am not from South Carolina. I moved to Colorado. Or I moved from Colorado here about a year and a half ago. It's been um, we we came down here as a bucket list thing for my daughter, for her to spend the last part of her life here. Food has always been a language of love for me. Um, so after, when we moved here, my daughter passed three weeks after we moved here. Um, so 
I felt divinely inspired to do a legacy for my daughter because she passed from cancer, from childhood cancer, and it had been her entire life. She was originally diagnosed when she was six months old, um, and it came back 15 years later. Um, we wanted to create a legacy for my daughter. So by going to Greenville Tech and the Culinary Arts Program, I was not only going to hone my cooking skills, it was a good distraction. And it was going to give me the tools that I needed so that I could start a successful business, so that I could carry out the two things that I loved most, my children and cooking. I received the Fall for Greenville Scholarship last fall. Um, and and what, that, what that did for me, you know, uh, I have big plans and big dreams and uh, a big purpose to fill. And going into business, starting a restaurant, um, starting a nonprofit, doing charitable goods, and having student loans, you know, starting out in major debt when you're going to go into something that's going to put you into debt. Um, is a scary thing and it, it can make and break a person. So um, this particular scholarship, it's keeping me from going into debt um, and it's allowing me to have some, some breathing room with the rest of the funds that I have set aside for school. When you write that check, you're like, yes, I know I did something good today, but you really are changing someone's life um, and you don't even know it. So. Keep donating, um, keep changing people's lives. For me, you're helping me live my dream. You're helping me um, create a legacy for my daughter um, and create a future for my son. Uh, so I am incredibly grateful for this scholarship and it's, it's, done more than, it's done more than just merely give me money to get to school. Currently, right now, um, where we're at, I am starting a food trailer. We are eventually going to open a restaurant called Delilah's, which is my daughter Lily's synonym. She started going by it in eighth grade and we have kept it going since. It just took and there's people in the world that only know her by Delilah. She used to tell it, only if you've known me since I was little can you call me anything else but Delilah. So we're going to open Delilah's. It's a villain themed restaurant. She was really big into cosplay and video games and comic books. Uh, rooting for the underdog. Um, the other side of the, the anti-hero villain theme is that uh, chemo and the drugs that you have to do to fight cancer, they're, they're anti-heroes. They do, they're mean and they're awful and they, it hurts, and, um, but they're there to fight the good cause and so we're doing that anti-hero villain theme. So all of our servers will be dressed in anti-hero villain cosplay, be it from movies or comic books or video games. Uh, we will have, I'm, I'm from the West, I'm from Wyoming and Colorado, so we'll have an elevated Western home style. So you'll get a lot of ranch style food, it'll stick to your ribs. Our children's menu every month will be donated to different childhood cancer charities across the world because we want to help the whole, not just the sum, or families that are in need, whether a, a kiddo wants to go on an adventure or they need help paying bills or if they need help with bereavement costs. And then during the month of September, uh, which is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we will donate 50% of our profits to a research company that's solely focusing on childhood cancer. So this is a way for me to give back to those that have given to us, to um, proudly honor my daughter, to, to speak my language of love, um, and, and to help those that are, that are going through what we've been through. I know that if you come into the, the culinary program, you are gonna find um, staff that truly care about what you want to do with your life and they're going to help you get there. Uh, you know, uh, all of them, Chef Grissom Granada, Chef Pat, uh, Chef Rourke, uh, Chef Austin, they have all, they've just wrapped themselves around me and they support me in every wild idea I have and every, um, when, it, when I'm cooking in class and I'm going against the recipe and throwing something extra and they're like, all right, you do you. We'll see how this turns out, you know, and um, they support my dream and they, it feels to me like they would go to any length to make sure that I accomplish that dream. They've, they've done more than just help me become a chef. Uh, they've helped me in my grief process, you know, which is, which is big and there's such an amazing staff over there um, that have 
been patient and walked me through every step of the way and, and they root for me every day, you know? Um, and, and I would like to be an advocate for someone like that, you know, maybe someone who's been in similar situation as, as I have and, 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 and help them in that way. Thank you, Greenville Tech. Thank you for everything. Greenville Technical College also was looking for places where maybe people were falling through the cracks. They did a study and they've created an initiative to solve some big problems. It's called the African American Male Scholars Initiative. Let's meet one of the people who's participating in that program. My name is Antoine Marshall. I study uh, health information management at Greenville Tech. I chose the health industry for the fact that uh, I've been out there for a long time. I was working and, and especially down here in, in the South, it, it was when I moved there, moved here in 93, it was more, it was more plants, you know, plant work, working in the mills and things like that. And I just got caught up in that rut, working in the mills. And after, you know, mills close, you know, plants, they can just lay you off at any time. But then I thought about, I'll say, in the health, health industry, you don't hear people, you know, hospitals closing or you don't hear uh, doctors and nurses just getting laid off for any reason like that. So it was like, I think that's, that's the route I need to go. <laughs> you know? I've been raised that education is the key. So I, I want to let my kids know, my children know that, you know, higher education is the thing. How did you choose Greenville Technical College? Uh, well, I'm also, uh, I'm a veteran and I also have a disability. So somehow I got in, I got in contact with the, uh, the VA vocational re uh, rehab and they're the ones who pointed me towards Greenville Tech. What has this program meant to you so far? I've never experienced anything like this program. Um, I mean, what, like I said, whatever problem or whatever we need, they're there for. Um, whether if it's food, whether if it's uh, you just need someone to talk to, any type of situation, they're there to help. I mean, it's just an uplifting thing, you know, and the only thing that they require in return is that once you graduate, come back and then be a mentor to someone else. And you already want to do that. Oh, yeah. It was last year, uh, Dr. Watt, she's over uh, the uh, OMSI program, gave us laptops. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, she gave us laptops and, you know, it was, I just think the foundation for, for supplying, you know, just donating the money to the program. You know, it wouldn't have been possible, it wouldn't have been possible without it. What will this degree mean to you? Oh, it's, uh, uh, boy, an accomplishment. Uh, I told you before that my family, you know, my brother, my sisters, my mother, my father, they all had their master's degree. I'm the oldest of five. I chose a different route. I went to the, I went to the military. That's one thing I can say I've done that I accomplished. Everybody else, you know, my brothers, sisters, they all, they, you know, they went to school and, and all. But by just having another, you know, having a degree, plus being, you know, a veteran, I could say I'm, I could be on that same level playing ground with them, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's, I mean, I think that that would be an accomplishment, just to, just to have, you know, that the military experience as well as having a degree. Absolutely. I mean, really, in so many ways, military experience is in and of itself its own degree. And we appreciate that service. So you're coming into Greenville Technical College with five years of military experience, three years of that as active duty, with a plethora of great job experiences and, and just some life under your belt. And you're sitting in a class with people who are fresh out of high school and maybe some others who have a little more experience like you do. Um, what does that mean to you? That means a lot. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing where Greenville Tech can uh, bring in people from all diverse backgrounds and 
uh, everything. Um, I said, I'm an older student, you got younger students there, and we go all collaborate and do things together, and it's all, it's all one good thing. I'll give you an example of when I was in medical lab technology, I was the oldest one in the class. Here is, I just took my prereqs just to get into the program. And I was intimidated, but they didn't, the, the, the students, they didn't make me feel any less. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, they tried to raise me up, you know. And that's one thing I like, I mean, well, I, I mean, I love about it, uh, about the school, about the students is that they don't look down on someone just because they're older than them or, you know, they just bring, you know, try to bring, bring them up. With OMSI and, and the, the programs with the schools, they, they always, I mean, they have support for anything that I need. So you're getting this degree. Oh, I'm getting it. <laughs> this is going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. No, no doubt about that. It's going to happen. And thanks to a lot of donors and a lot of support and a lot of people in this community that want you to succeed. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, I, re I really didn't know that there was people supporting like that, you know. They don't even know me, but because of, of what the program uh, portrays or, or what, it, what, what, what we are uh, trying to do, they, they're behind it. And I'm living proof. And there's others, uh, there's two guys I know, they, they graduate in the nursing program. Living proof that, I mean, it's, it's helping. Well, they know you now, Antoine Marshall, and it's a joy to get to meet you and to get to know you better. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I am so happy and proud to know that I have played some small role in the wonderful success of the students we just heard from, Lacey, Antoine, and Sade, and I know that you are too. I'd like to especially thank Jane Robolo and WYFF4 for coming and being with us and hearing these wonderful student stories. Indeed, they make a difference. I'm Ann Wright, Vice President for Advancement for the Greenville Tech Foundation. Our mission is to support Greenville Technical College, and we do that in many ways. We offer scholarships, in fact, this past year, over $450,000. We also assist students with emergency needs. Last year, over 65 students and over $100,000 in needs were met. We also assist the college with programs, with equipment and technology, and also with facilities. We're there to ensure that our students receive a high quality education at an affordable price, and that at the end of the day, their lives have been transformed. In thanking all of you, I would like to particularly thank Dr. Keith Miller, President, Greenville Technical College, and the Area Commission for their support. I would also like to thank the Greenville Tech Foundation Board and our Board Chair, Stacy Brandon, who you'll hear from in just a bit. Our Board are donors also. In fact, for several years running, we've had 100% Board giving. Thank you, Board members, for giving your time, talent, and your treasure. I'd also like to thank our small but mighty staff who is always there to answer your questions and let you know the impact that your gifts are making. In particular, I'd like to recognize our staff member, Jackie Cabosco, for her work in pulling this event together for you to enjoy. And our faculty and staff Many of you have contributed not only the time in the classroom and the time with our students helping them succeed, but you made contributions as well and helped us exceed our campaign goal. 
So thanks to all of you, to all of you watching, and to those of you who will join us later, we thank you so much. We simply couldn't do it without you. It's important for me to share with you a couple of new additions to Greenville Technical College. One of them is the Dreisbach Anderson Student Success Center. It, this is located on the Barton campus on Pleasantburg Drive. And indeed, the name Student Success Center is exactly what it is. A student can go there and register for classes. They can learn about career pathways. They can also take advising in terms of the direction they need to go. Testing is available. And we even have a Starbucks. And all of this, of course, is because of our wonderful donor, Dodie Anderson. Another place that's new that I hope you will visit soon is our Benson campus in Greer. Thanks to Jim and Evelyn Benson, we now have a beautiful outdoor pavilion and amphitheater for all of our students to enjoy, but also for the community. You'll want to visit both, and I hope you'll contact us about that. We also have some big plans for the future, and we will be in touch with you soon about those. Also, in the mail, very soon, you will receive your impact report from the Greenville Tech Foundation. There you will find more student stories and more information about how your gifts have made a significant difference in so many lives. You'll also find it at our website, greenvilletechfoundation.org. We encourage you to visit our website to learn more about all that is going on at the college, our many programs and services, as well as events of the foundation. And also, that's how you can contact any of us. You'll find our contact information there as well. Again, it's been such a joy to be with you. Thank you all so much for not only your gifts, but your time. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our next segment, Chef Bill and Carson. You are in for a treat, I'm going to tell you. And by the way, if you didn't get your spice packet, just let us know and we'll get one to you. Remember, education is for everyone. Enjoy. Welcome to the Truist Culinary and Hospitality Innovation Center. I am Chef Bill Twaller, the chef here at CHI. Today we are lucky to be joined by Carson Mostert from the University of South Carolina School of Medicine here in Greenville. Welcome, Carson. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be back, Chef Bill. It's been uh, such an exciting adventure to be here and gain part of my education here with Greenville Tech and CHI in culinary medicine. It was fantastic to have you. Um, I got to see you a few times. You can, I'm going to start with a simple roast chicken that we're doing for the um, foundation. And you can talk about a little bit about the culinary medicine classes that you uh, were involved in. Yeah, perfect. I'd love to. It's been uh, one of my passions for a long time, uh, but I didn't know necessarily how to approach cooking, especially in a healthy manner. So the opportunities that, that CHI has afforded me have been invaluable. And now that I get to share with my patients, I can't say thank you enough to, to Greenville Tech and CHI for that. That, that is awesome. So today we're going to do just a simple, perfect roast chicken. Started with a little mirepoix, diced carrot, celery, onion. I threw some fresh thyme on there to give it a little bit more savoriness, herbaceousness. We have a washed chicken that we washed inside and out. I'm going to use our all-purpose seasoning, and I'm going to season from the inside. I always season from the inside. There's no salt in this. What's good about not having a salty chicken? Yeah, that's a great question. Something we found in science is that uh, there's what's called a dose-response relationship, meaning the more salt you have in your diet, the more likely you are to have high blood pressure and something called congestive heart failure. So by reducing the amount of salt in your diet, you reduce your chances of developing those, those diseases. Yeah, so it's, you know, salt isn't everything. It does help a little bit of flavor. Um, we're going to kind of trust this chicken. I've tucked the wings underneath. I've got a piece of string so I can tie my chicken legs up in the back. Put that around. As soon as we get this in and done, we're going to put this in the oven at 425, baste it every so often, 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. 
um, with its own natural juices or some low sodium chicken stock that you have. But right now we are ready to go in the oven. You know, I think that's one of the things that uh, this culinary medicine class has taught me the most is that, you know, growing up, I always thought, you know, the salt was the flavor. That was my favorite flavor. I'd go to McDonald's and put even more salt on those fries. But learning in this culinary medicine, there are so many more flavors that you can experiment with, have adventures with, and really increase the, the taste of everything you're eating. Um, so I can't say, you know, enough about experimenting with those different herbs and spices that you're talking about, like the rosemary you put on the vegetables, um, that, that different spice blend that you created. I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, you could put in heat, you could put citrus, all those things help things pop. That's one of the things we kind of did. We're going to do our sort of roast chickpea snack for tonight. Um, can of chickpeas, drained, rinsed, let them dry a little bit. Then we have our our salted lemon herb mixture and you know the herb the, the uh, salt and that touch of citrus really give it a pop but it's that simple we're gonna make our own roasted crispy chickpeas and this is one of my favorite snacks that I've uh, found out in, in, in this educational experience because the chickpeas themselves are also called garbanzo beans and beans are so high in your iron your fiber um, and a bunch of other nutrients that help prevent just about every disease you can think of with diabetes, stroke, even Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, a diet high in fiber can help prevent those uh, diseases. Yeah, I, you know, I love a little roasted chickpea snack. And then when I discovered that I could make it much easier on my own and cheaper, it got even better. But another one of my favorite um, vegetables is cauliflower. I don't think a lot of people use it. I think they're kind of scared of it. But it's really easy, you break off the outer green leaves, core it out with a paring knife, and then you can break it up into whatever sizes of florets you like. Uh, we'll start with some big, I'll show you how to break those down. And then simply, you know, we're gonna use olive oil. What's the benefit of using olive oil versus whole butter? Yeah, there's a, a ton of things we can talk about with that, but especially the olive oil, it's something called a monounsaturated fat. And that's just, it's more heart healthy and better for your diet, whereas the things like butter are what's called a, a saturated fat, which then increases your chance of high blood lipids, which then increases your chance of, once again, stroke, dementia, heart attack. So we try and avoid those butters as much as possible. Right, butter is flavor, but a really good cold press extra virgin olive oil is also a really nice flavor. It can give you sort of a more, say, spring, summer flavor, I think. Um, it doesn't weight you down as much. I think it's a lot lighter, but this is simple. So you can take the big florets. I usually split right in the core, pop that open. It makes it look more natural instead of slicing through it when you don't normally have a square cauliflower floret. Then we're gonna take just some simple um, salt and pepper. You can use any herb blend you want, actually the olive oil first. So then the salt and pepper will stick to it. You can use any herb mixture you want. Salt and pepper is easy. It will help brown, the oil will help brown the cauliflower, the salt and pepper will help brown the cauliflower a little bit because it draws a little bit of moisture out of it, which helps it get golden brown. You can put this in the oven for about 30 minutes. So after your chicken has been basted a few times, it's been in the oven for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, put your cauliflower in with the chicken and it will start to roast and brown and caramelize. And one thing that I love about cauliflower is, is almost what it isn't. Cauliflower has a ton of good things in it. It has choline, it has fiber, um, but it also only has 150 calories and almost one head. That's two tablespoons of olive oil is 200 calories. A pound of ground beef is 1,500 calories. And can you imagine, I mean, trying to eat a whole head of cauliflower, that's a lot, but you're only getting 150 calories from it. That, but it's a good kind of filler. If you feel like you're Absolutely. still hungry, you can have a little cauliflower instead of, say, a bag of Doritos. Exactly. Very good. Very good. We have been cooking this chicken for about an hour. We already had the chickpeas um, out of the oven. I like the, the chickpeas to sit a little bit. They crisp up a little bit more. We're gonna, this is kind of our bar snack while we're waiting for the chef to finish dinner. So Carson, you know, help yourself, have a few uh, chickpeas there. We've also pulled the chicken out so that it can rest. We want all the juices to rest and assimilate into the chicken. We're gonna use the rack, get the juices out of the rack. 
like that. You also could have some extra. Never hurts to have some low sodium chicken stock in the house. Um, I keep it all the time if I'm, you know, low sodium chicken stock tastes better than water if I'm cooking rice. <laughs> yes, it does. We also tempted our bird, took the temperature, and we have a good 165, so we pulled it out because we're supposed to cook chicken to 165 degrees. Very important, make sure it's all dead and ready to go. Same time, this is a asparagus dish that I learned in southern France when visiting my aunt. She just takes a little bit of olive oil again, straight asparagus, clipped and in, and then just sort of sautés it. I used to always think blanching it, I shouldn't lose any vitamins and minerals, right? Correct. In fact, you know, that's some of the interesting thing about oil is that vitamins are either, they either dissolve in water or they dissolve in fats. And a lot of the vitamins you want actually dissolve in fats. And so when you cook them in the fat, it actually brings those vitamins out and makes them more available for your body to absorb. That's good to know. I didn't know, I knew about water-soluble, oil-soluble fats. That's, that's interesting. I love that little point. And you know, I'll say one thing I've learned here is, personally, I wasn't the best chef before coming. I'm not sure if I'm the best chef now. Um, but I'd always tell my patients, like, hey, go home and, and use this vegetable more. And they'd be like, well, how? And I had no idea how to do that. You know, I'd be like, well, well just, uh, just do it. But, but coming here, learning from, uh, from Greenville Tech and from these amazing chefs, all these little tips that they're giving really helped me go in and speak with my patients and say, hey, this is a great, easy way to get the vegetable in your diet. Just, just put a little oil, fry it up, there you go. Yeah, it's just a simple saute dish. We're just making it, breaking down the fiber a little bit in the outside so it's a little bit more palatable. We caramelize it a little bit because caramelization means color, means flavor, color, flavor. So think about that, it doesn't have to get black, it just needs to get golden brown. And then we have our, our pan sauce that's ready to go. Our, right now it's a au jus, it's just the juice. We're gonna thicken it. We're using a cornstarch slurry, which is nice. So if you're gluten intolerant, cornstarch is gluten free. And we can use this to thicken. So it's equal parts cold water and cornstarch mixed together into it being a smooth paste and then poured in. You don't necessarily have to pour it all in, just pour in what you need. It has to come to a simmer so you can see that it's thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. And there we go. All right, beautiful. We'll let that just kind of simmer for a few seconds and do its thing, meld the flavors together, simmer, let all that flavor go. Our asparagus looks beautiful. I think we're ready to plate. Um, our cauliflower came out really nice. Nice and golden brown, crispy. Gives it texture and flavor again. And again, you can use any seasoning blend. We have included a all-purpose and a house blend. Um, you can use those interchangeably on the chicken and the chickpeas if you like, um, or you can follow the recipes. You can also use them later for other dishes. You could put your all-purpose blend in your asparagus. You could rub it on some fat-free ribs to barbecue. <laughs> That's all, right. All kinds of things. So we've got our little chicken. You've got your caramelized mirepoix. If you want to save that to uh, make a little bit of vegetable stock, go right ahead. Those are options you can do later. But we are going to carve our chicken. Your string is ready to get cut off. So we'll take that apart. And once again, I can't talk enough about CHI and what it's taught me in terms of, of cooking skills, especially knife skills. It, vegetables and, and even meat to an extent um, was always tough for me because I just didn't know how to carve it. I just seemed to like, butcher it and it wouldn't look pretty. And like you said, you eat with your eyes, you know, I wouldn't want to eat it. And just the simple knife skills that I learned here that I can give to my patients helps them eat in a healthier and better manner. Right, and if you want to with the chicken, so crispy skin, all the fats rendered out, I love that part. We're just gonna go down the backbone or the keel bone and follow the line of the, the chicken and just cut this boneless breast off and use that as service. You can see I just peel it behind, follow the chicken. So how much protein should I be eating with every dish? You know, with every dish, uh, talking about like meat, kind of the, the national guidelines is your meat should be about the size of a deck of cards. Um, and then everything else should either be filled with whole grains or your vegetables and fruits, depending on uh, what, your, uh, what your dish is for that night. 
So like right here, we're already getting good portion size and filling up your plate. So you see already like, I mean, I would say about two thirds of your plate is full of those vegetables, which once again, going back to calories, you know, that may be a total of about 100 calories right there on your plate. And if you can eat all that, you're going to be full up before you eat anything else. Absolutely. So we just sliced the chicken nicely. We're going to fan it across the table. Right in front. Along there. A little bit of our sauce. And so we have a nice crispy chicken. I'm not going to put the sauce on the chicken. I'm going to put it around it just so, you know, you, you don't want that skin to get soggy. You know, that is, a, that is such a great tip. I never would have thought of that. And that makes me think of when we were in, we were in class, we heard all the things about uh, this program that you guys do called Quick Jobs. Can you talk a bit about that? Sure thing. So we also have a quick jobs program here at the Truist Culinary and Hospitality Innovation Center. It is a two week program for either basic cooking skills or for basic service skills. So you can come in, you're transferring from one job to another, transitioning. You're going from re-entry or recovery program and need job skills quickly. We can train you in basically under three weeks and get you a job in the hospitality industry, either in basic service skills or basic cooking skills. And you can find that out at chigreenville.com. Look under learning options or call us here at the school or stop by at 556 Perry Avenue in West Village of Greenville. Wow, that's incredible. Well, Carson, thank you very much for coming and uh, sharing your knowledge about nutrition and things with us as we did a wonderfully roast chicken breast over some caramelized um, cauliflower and sauteed asparagus and then a little snack of some uh, roasted chickpeas, which I have to try. <laughs> yes, sir, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, and again, thank you everyone from the Truist Culinary and Hospitality Innovation Center and have a great evening. Wow, that chicken looks delicious and I can't wait to try the recipe at home. I don't know about you all, but when I opened up that uh, envelope from the Greenville Tech Foundation and the spices, filled the room. It really made me hungry and eager to try these recipes. Hello everybody, I'm Stacy Brandon. I'm the Upstate Market President for Bank of America and it's my honor this year to be the chair of the Greenville Tech Foundation Board. I have been on the Greenville Tech Foundation Board for several years and I can't tell you enough about what the, a great job Ann and her staff do every day. I am particularly passionate about the work that the foundation does for school, student scholarships and student financial assistance. As the student videos convey so well, your donations are literally changing the trajectory of these students' lives. All of the efforts of the foundation are restricted to Greenville County. This is a blessing because we can see the results so close to home but it's a challenge because donations are likewise restricted. That is why each and every one of you is so important and we could not do this work without you. As a community-based college, it's through working together that we can support students on their educational and career path goals. What is so touching is that people just like you made donations years ago to set up scholarships that are delivering the gift of education right now and will continue to do so in perpetuity. Past and current donors come together to provide the gift of education, to ensure economic mobility, and to show the community the value of an education from Greenville Technical College. Thank you for always being there for our students, and for the community and for joining us for this virtual celebration today. We hope to be together again soon. Mm -hmm.